Good morning, iPadOS team! Uh-oh, I mean, good morning, iOS team! Oh, hey Tim. I've noticed that we're not seeing that many sales for the M2 iPads. Yeah, it turns out most people weren't actually that annoyed with any iPad hardware, they just wanted more pro software. Hmm, well, could we launch the M2 iPad Pros with Final Cut and Logic? I don't know, Tim, that sounds like a lot of work. Okay, well, we're just stacking up an inventory so much we need to start shipping these things. <sighs> okay, I mean those applications are already running on Apple Silicon Max and now we'll have to optimize them for a touch screen. Oh, it's gonna take so well, long. Well, you know, sometimes we just gotta give the people what they want. Yeah, I, I guess. As long as they're willing to pay five bucks a month. Wait, is, is Final Cut going towards a membership model now? <laughs> oh, you silly goose. Everything's going towards a subscription model. Can I just say from the beginning, this is the weirdest timing I've ever seen for Apple dropping something. I mean, it's a couple weeks before Dub Dub, less than a month to go, and it's also several months after refreshing the iPad Pros. And they decided to launch this right in the middle somehow? Like, were they late and this was supposed to be ready earlier in the year? Or are they early and deciding to ship it for some reason before Dub Dub? And I also think expectations need to be put in check from the beginning, okay? Because there's been many times where Apple will drop a big software update and even have some new iPad accessories to ship like the Magic Keyboard case and they'll launch that before Dub Dub and then there's a bunch of people out there, tech YouTubers that I'll keep nameless <laughs> that think, oh well if Apple's dropping this now that means there must be some amazing updates coming in June when in reality there was not that many major updates to follow. There's a good chance that Final Cut and Logic might be the biggest additions to iPadOS this year and then a dub dub, it'll be mostly a catch up year for iPad OS, and they'll just be adding things that they probably should have had last year but didn't get around to adding. Although I hope that's not the case, I should just preface on the more optimistic note. Thank you, Apple. I know that this pricing is a little bit confusing, and a lot of people are worried about the future of Final Cut, but it's nice to actually just see, even if it's not in the exact way we want, some attention, some time has been designated toward making some pro software for the iPad, which we've been asking for for years. I literally remember people talking about this back before the A12X chip came out, so after all these years, it's refreshing to finally see some time and attention, and some even exclusive features brought to these applications, but of course they found a way to do it in a more Apple-esque way, so I have some issues with it, but overall I'm just impressed that we're talking about it and that the applications are officially launching on May 23rd. But what honestly kind of impressed me about this launch is that Apple seems to be very much optimizing Final Final Cut Pro and Logic for a touch interface. This is not just a simple port. This is not just them taking the Mac version and slapping it on there, which is honestly kind of what I wanted, but almost all of the videos that Apple has showcased and on the webpage they have demonstrating Final Cut's features, most of them don't even show a keyboard and trackpad being attached. It feels like they're optimizing it mostly for the touch interface and the Apple Pencil, allowing you to draw on top of your video feed and then it live animates that, so that's that's definitely something we couldn't really do on Mac. And they're showing more baked in neural net training, like background replacement just being baked into the app. And finally now, Apple is letting you actually record a ProRes video off of the iPad using, I guess, Apple software. M2 iPad Pro could record in ProRes before, but you had to download a third party application for some reason. Now this is technically a first party application, but it's cool that you can record straight from the iPad and then go back and edit that footage that you recorded and it's at a high bit rate and they're gonna have a lot of the Mac functionality like voice isolation which is cool but also adding some new like placement techniques like this rotating option that comes up on the side so that you can move clips more precisely side to side also something that wasn't really necessary on the Mac because you had a keyboard and mouse input but where a lot of my concern comes in is yes there does seem to be a lot of exclusive features now for Final Cut on the iPad and a lot of things that our Macs couldn't do but that also gets me wondering are 
are there a bunch of things that the Mac can do that the iPad can't? Especially when it comes to my style of editing, you know, side scrolling and cutting out very quickly all of those dead pieces of air throughout the timeline. How easy is that going to be if they're kind of optimizing it for touch and kind of rarely showcasing how it works with a keyboard and trackpad? I'm more interested in that because I think a lot of people buying these iPads are probably buying them with keyboard cases anyway, especially if you're planning on using Final Cut with it. And I worry that this might turn into more of a over-glorified like TikTok slash Instagram stories editor because I saw them showcasing how you can edit footage in vertical and have these quick catchy overlays and it worries me that because it's the iPad and Apple's mindset with the iPad is always that it can't just work exactly the way a Mac works it always has to find its own unique way of doing something does that mean that there could be a bunch of Final Cut functionality that they don't bring over to the iPad I hope that's not the case but that's just a worry I have because I think they might be prioritizing touch friendliness a little bit too much, which is fine for those who don't want to use it with a keyboard, but for those who do, my honest to God hope is that they just emulate the Mac version as much as possible so that people can feel more comfortable transitioning from their Mac version of Final Cut to the iPad version. But that brings up the whole pricing discussion because, yeah, unfortunately, even if you've spent the $300 or you bought Final Cut through the Pro Apps bundle for education for $200, none of that translates to the Final Cut on iPad version, which is kind of upsetting. So yeah, just because you bought it on the Mac, that does not mean you immediately get it on the iPad. You still gotta pay five bucks a month or 50 bucks a year. And honestly, like that pricing is somewhat reasonable compared to Adobe Creative Cloud, but obviously you're getting a lot less than what the Creative Cloud suite offers. And what worries me more about Final Cut on the iPad going the subscription route is it points to the idea that Apple might bring that to other aspects of their pro software. Like, I'm gonna get so annoyed if they tried to turn the Final Cut Mac app into a subscription model and tell everybody, okay, you can keep your old version of Final Cut, but if you want new features and new software support, you're gonna have to subscribe to Final Cut Plus for 50 a year. Like, I know that's where Apple's wanting to push for everything, but I really don't want that to be the case because I really like the concept of just buying something once and then you own it for life. And I know that doesn't really sound practical anymore in the age of subscriptions and everything, but still, I knew this day was coming eventually, but it's a little bit sad to see it finally here. Same thing with Logic Pro, the licenses don't transfer and everything, but from the videos they've showcased, it does seem like Logic goes into an extreme amount of depth compared to your traditional music creating apps and also adding some new things that were not available on the Mac, like being able to play the guitar strings straight off the touchscreen itself or being able to dictate what sounds are made based on how the Apple Pencil is drawing on the timeline and everything. And unlike Final Cut, Logic Pro is coming to all iPads that have the A12 chip or newer, which is honestly quite a lot of iPads. I believe that means even the budget iPad should be capable of running Logic, which is pretty cool, but where I take a bit more issue is the compatibility requirements of Final Cut on the iPad. They say it requires the M1 chip or higher, which, yeah, I know they kind of let you run Final Cut on those really old, really slow Intel-based MacBook Airs, and those are definitely way slower than the A12X chip. So is it possible that they could have had a scaled down like lighter version of Final Cut for those of us with the 2018 iPad Pros or at least the 2020 iPad Pros? Those have six gigs of RAM. Those have the A12Z chip. I feel like they could do it, but this feels more like a we want more people to upgrade their iPads, but no one wants to because obviously the software doesn't change that much when you buy those higher end models. So this feels like Apple trying to drive a wedge between the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros and say, no, no, this is really really what you need that M1 chip for. This is what unlocks all that extra functionality, whether or not you really need that chip. I guess we'll never know for sure, but I do think that by bringing Pro Class software and by Apple supporting it themselves firsthand, that increases the desirability of the M1 iPads. That definitely makes them feel like they enable some functionality that wasn't previously there, but in case any of you are wondering, no, this doesn't make me want to go back to using an iPad to edit my videos because I don't know enough about how that timeline is going to work without having a dedicated mouse and keyboard attached to it. I hope it emulates the Mac version when you are connected to the Magic Keyboard case and everything, but you're also limited on the I.O. compared to a MacBook Pro, and the storage options are very expensive relative to what you could get a M1 MacBook Air or even an M2 MacBook Air for these days. Honestly, when you price out 13-inch iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard case and you want it to have 512 gigs of storage, it might honestly be 
cheaper to buy a refurbished M1 Pro 14 inch laptop and that's going to have a bigger display, still have ProMotion, still have mini LED, better speakers, better I.O. and fully fledged Mac OS, which ideally will give you Final Cut for a one time price. The iPad, in my opinion, isn't really undercutting or cannibalizing anything with these options, but absolutely I'm very, very curious to how this application works. And I would love to test it out for you guys on this channel, but uh, my iPad Pro is not capable of running it. So I'm kind of debating right now if it's worth checking out an M1 iPad Pro just so that I can test the software. Luckily, they do provide a one month free trial of Logic and Final Cut, so you don't have to spend the five bucks to just try it out and see if it can work with your workflow. But now with how I do the behind the scenes editing streams for my channel members, there's still a very much, and this is not a new statement. I've been saying this for years, but I just want to double down on it on today's video. The iPad was not one or two applications away from being like pro level hardware to me that could replace my Mac. It's always from the beginning been a long laundry list of things that Mac OS is capable of doing like running OBS or allowing external webcam support or having optimized battery charging or having a freaking calculator app. All of those types of things have always gotten in the way of me switching completely over to an iPad and ditching my Mac. And while it's great to see Apple offering some kind of first party support and it's showing that Apple's own dev teams are working on bringing more pro class software to the iPad, it doesn't immediately fix and forgive all of my issues that the iPad still has. Not having audio MIDI settings and making it harder to capture the display and the weird gimmicky design of the files app compared to Finder on the Mac. There's just a bunch of tiny things that all stack up. It's not one or two big things. So I think there's a lot of people now that are probably seeing this announcement and just thinking, oh, okay, it's totally justified now. iPad can replace any Mac. And sure, it might be able to replace a little bit more functionality, but depending on what they keep and what they take out for the Final Cut and Logic version of apps, this still isn't really unlocking what, in my opinion, the iPad Pro could truly be doing if it ran dual boot Mac OS, which we know those M1 and M2 chips are perfectly capable of running because they're in MacBooks without fans and they're working. But I do think overall this is a step in the right direction and it would be kind of cool if at DubDub this year they announced that the iPad is going to allow sideloading or something and then you can start downloading a lot of those Mac applications that are not available on the iPad. So I guess there's a bit more hope for the future of the iPad lineup for me, but it's still not completely over the challenge hurdles that I think make it inherently weaker than the software capable on a Mac. But how funny is it that these things are getting Final Cut and Logic before they get the calculator app? Like, that just doesn't sound right to me. But that's the reality we're living in. But what do you guys think of the pricing model? What do you think of the compatibility? And what do you think of the functionality based on what Apple has shown us so far? Are you going to be considering upgrading your iPad just because of this announcement? Feel free to let me know your plans down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is Rap Shapiro, and I'll see you all in the next one.